Hey guys, what's going on? This is Rick, the Middle Class Millennial. Today we're starting part two of this series, a part two of finishing my garage. This time we're focusing on insulation in this part. Uh, unfortunately, I mentioned that I was going to showcase the thermostat and wall heater install. I kind of beat you guys to it. I apologize. Uh, but keep in mind, this is not a how-to video. Uh, quick disclaimer again, this is not a how-to video. This is just for entertainment purposes only. Uh, please take what you see in here as a grain of salt and uh, consult your local laws in your area. Make sure everything's up to code. What you see here may not be up to code in your area, so make sure to get the required permits if necessary to do these jobs. Anyway, like I was saying, um, I didn't really showcase that for that reason anyway, but let me go ahead and give you guys an overview. You also notice we got some drywall right here. This is temporary. I'm actually going to take it off and insulate in there. I had to keep mice from getting out of there, which I'm going to show you guys in a sec why. Hey guys, quick update here before we start. I haven't yet installed the electric heat, but one thing I've noticed is that uh, with how cold it's getting outside, I notice there's a little gap in the garage door there. A mouse could easily come in here, get up in here, get into the crawl space, go up the basement stairs of the house and get into the house. So I'm gonna have to temporarily put some drywall right here and I might temporarily stick some bats here so I don't have my pipe down here getting frozen with how cold the garage is getting. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. All right, got it temporary set up to keep the mice out. So I got that all set up. I put some uh, of that mineral wool down in the cavities here. So it should prevent it from freezing. All right, so let me give you guys a quick overview of what is going on in this video, and we'll go from there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what we did since uh, last video. I went ahead and installed a Honeywell thermostat, as you can see here. And the reason I got this particular one, not the Cadet Series, was it goes all the way down to 40 Fahrenheit instead of 50. The lowest it'll go on the uh, Cadet Series is 50, which is really nice because, like I said, I plan on using this place to store paint, batteries, and we could also start seedlings in here, which means that the temperature will probably be in the 50s at that point. But just to keep paint from freezing, I don't need it much higher than 40. 40 is usually good enough. And then I ran the unit here. And part of the reason I did the selection, guys, is... This clears the doorway, so it's far enough away from the door, but the particular reason I picked this section here is I originally was going to put it right here. However, then I realized that, so I, I own a sedan. I don't own a crossover SUV. Most homeowners do. And I was thinking, well, when I go to sell this house down the road in the future, somebody may own a crossover SUV, and they're going to want to get their big-ass crossover SUV in here. So I realized crossover SUVs can fit in here, but it's going to be pretty tight. And if I had a wall heater right here... The risk is the heat coming out of here, if somebody parked their crossover in here, would just start frying their paint and damaging things. Plus, you know, the heater's not heating adequately. There's no air circulation. Over here, because the vehicle's coming in here, and you can see this, we have a little bit of clearance. It's not going to be directly right in front of the vehicle. There, there is going to be a little bit of clearance for it to properly circulate air. So that's why I chose this particular location. And as far as the thermostat goes, I didn't want to put it over here or over here in this area because I didn't want heat rising up and turning off the thermostat when the rest of the room isn't warm. At least over here, it's near the door, so it's accessible. And like I said, uh, it's a far enough away from the wall heater that it's not going to turn this thing off unless it's actually, you know, the temperature it says it is in the whole room as opposed to just right next to the heater. So that's the main reason why I chose the location. Of course, the only con is I had to run a lot more wire to get to it. That was the catch. So, and then also I started and went ahead with the, uh, decided to pick this uh, mineral wool insulation. And the reason I chose it was, like I said, I have some water that likes to pick up over here. There is a corner back over there by the tripod that water likes to settle as well. Keep in mind, I am going to be putting silicone around here and everything, and getting those the, the baseboards put up against there. But I still want to have some insulation here that's at least water resistant, so it doesn't mold up on the homeowner, whoever has it in the future, if there's any water related event. So, and I got to say though, first using it because I had to pull out a bag recently because I had to plug up that hole from uh, when we had temperatures in the teens the other day. Um, I do like working with it. I like that you don't have to deal with any uh, vapor barrier like you do with fiberglass. There's no vapor retarder on it, so that's kind of nice. Uh, but uh, the only thing I could say is it is kind of flaky too, and it is pretty dense. So it definitely is a different material to work with than fiberglass. First things first, I want to make this perfectly clear. When you're dealing with fiberglass or mineral oil insulation, get some kind of respirator or dust mask, guys. You do not want to be breathing this stuff. Also, one thing to note here, guys. Compared to fiberglass, this stuff comes in uh, smaller segments than your typical, I think it's like 8-foot segments or whatever, 6-something foot segments. They're, they're about half this, the length. Also, too, you don't get as much per bag as opposed to fiberglass. 
this stuff is quite a bit more expensive. So unless you're worried about moisture, there's really not much of a difference between the mineral wool stuff and the fiberglass. But since I am worried about moisture in the garage, that's why I've decided to go with this. Or if you're doing a basement, this is a good option. But aside from that, in most cases, it's fiberglass. That's why for the ceiling, guys, that I'm going to be doing last, I am going to be putting fiberglass up here because I'm not worried about water getting up there. I'm worried about water on the sides. We're going to measure our openings. The bats are about 15 inches wide. This is 14 and a quarter. I'm going to have to cut an inch off the side of it. Plus, I have a pretty tall cavity up in here, as you can see. So what I've been doing is, what I did for here, is I'll measure about 25 inches. I'm going to cut the bat in half at 25 inches, shove that first segment up in here, make sure there's no obstructions up in this empty cavity here, and then put the second section in right here. That way you're not fighting the whole chunk. You can just do individual sections. That way it's not being all torn up when you're shoving it up in there. Anyway, sorry for the audio quality. My headset's been giving me absolute grief. I do need to get a better camera. I've been using my smartphone for the longest time, and eventually I'm going to start putting some money into this stuff. But anyway, so we got 25 inches. I'm going to cut it in half with the 25. install the short segment first. I'm going to put the side in that I didn't cut, the side that I did cut on the bottom here. Actually, it's this one. I'm going to hook this into the bottom so it kind of lines up. Anyway, just go ahead and shove it up there. Tough field stop. There we go. Beautiful. That's where I cut it. That's where I wanted it. All right, today's the next day. As you can see, you got this section insulated except around the heater here. We just got the power hooked up to it, grand finale. Let's go ahead and turn it up to 45. And she just came on, smelled a little bit of minor burning, and I think that's just from the dust, from the insulation getting in there. Uh, but uh, we're gonna let it heat up the space a little bit, and then we'll resume work and just put it to work. Theoretically, I could double heat the output. I could plug that into uh, my separate uh, outlet circuit there and put in, you know, 3,000 watts of power. But I'm going to let this bugger do the work of heating up this space. And if it can heat up this space under insulated or raise the temperature up, then I know it's not going to have a problem when it's insulated in here. I sliced it in half to get it behind the wire, so we're going to try it like this. All right, real quick, I noticed that we have some nails sticking through here, which isn't a huge deal, but go ahead and get yourself a uh, angle grinder if you got one. We're just going to cut these nails off. All right. All right, as you guys can see, I've already went ahead and I put some backing for my drywall, my 5 8 drywall in the corners here when I'm done. I'm going to go ahead and cut a slice out and put it in here. You don't have to do this, but I went ahead and spray foam behind this cavity since the R value is not going to be as good because of the wood right here. And spray foam has the best R value per square inch as opposed to like normal insulation. Um, and I did this up here as well. Uh, one cavity I'm going to leave open from this section up. I'm going to leave open for the security camera that I'm going to run up in here until I get that done. 
And when I do the ceiling insulation up along here, I'm going to leave empty for my heat detector until that comes in. And then, yeah, as you can see on this side over here, I've already got this section done. As you can see, I just got to put insulation in the cavity. So anyway, let's go ahead and finish this uh, wall up. All right, we're on finally this last corner over here of the wall insulation. Um, this door was sealed off when they put new siding on the house before I had purchased the home. Um, and I didn't know what kind of backing they'd put behind the door because they had bolted the door shut. I went ahead and drilled some holes, found out that they just braced it from here over. So in the center here, there's nothing here. And I thought, okay, I could just fill it with spray foam. Then realizing how open and hollow this was, I decided I got some, I got some blown in cellulose. I'm going to chop that stuff up and fill it up to here with that cellulose, I don't have to use as much spray foam. I did put spray foam at the bottom because if any water gets in there, spray foam doesn't rot, cellulose does. So, um, and then also, what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna get an angle grinder. We're gonna cut the hinges off here. And we're gonna, before we do that, we're also gonna bolt screws into the side here so it stays tight. That way we have a nice smooth surface to mount the drywall over. I also have noticed I got about a half inch of play right here. I do have half inch foam board laying around. I got some scrap of that laying around. I might go ahead and cut the pieces out to fit and use some foil tape and seal them up. So this isn't going to be a perfectly insulated wall, but I'm hoping to get halfway decent R value out of this once we do all this stuff. All right, when it comes to cellulose, you're going to want to have like some kind of garden, uh, uh, some kind of garden claw to break up the cellulose in the back because it's pretty compact and it's designed to go in a blower that chops it up. Try wouldn't hurt too, so you're going to see me chop some of that stuff up, get it nice and loose, and I'm going to start a loose fill on the top manually by hand. You want to break it up. You don't want it compact or it won't insulate correctly. And you're going to make a mess. It looks like it's... This is definitely full. It's definitely distributing evenly. Which is good. All right, you guys can see that I went ahead and I filled the whole thing out with cellulose. I went ahead and put tape over the openings to keep the draft out. When I go ahead and put the foam board over and tape it, it'll further keep the draft out. I ended up having to put some holes at the top here because I'm unable to shove the cellulose all the way up there. Unfortunately, I'm just going to have to spray foam all these openings here until I see it come out at the bottom. Then I'll know it's good and then tape it off. <laughs> Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and cut this hinge with the angle grinder and take the guard off. I have reviewed this grinder in the past. Link's in the description below if you want to see the review on this particular grinder. Anyway, I'm due for a new wheel, but see, let's see if this wheel can finish this hinge up. Okay, we're on the final stretch of the uh, wall insulation for the garage. I went ahead and removed the temporary drywall that I had in front of the bathroom to protect the pipes from freezing. Uh, we have two two by six cavities. I'm gonna go ahead and insulate them with single bats, not double two by four bats. As you can see, I took some photos up here of the cavities with my cell phone to see what's going on. And unfortunately got a bunch of nails from the siding popping through. So it is gonna be a little difficult, but I can at least get one bat in there at least halfway up the wall. So I'm gonna try doing that for both cavities. And then we're going to go ahead and, and kind of snug it up here. And I'll put another probably bat in front to kind of add some R value to the bathtub a little bit. So anyway, let's get started. All right, I went ahead and cut it in thirds. I was hoping to just do it in half, but nope. Let's see what we can do here. Okay. It's not too bad, but still a pain in the butt. Good news was there wasn't very many cobwebs, so I'm not worried about being bit by a black widow. But 
I will tell you, I did find a masked hunter bug in here before I started. If you don't know what those are, look them up. They're like a bug that covers themselves in dust. Uh, and I heard they have pretty painful bites. Probably been bitten while in, and uh, I'm not going to find out. All right, well, it didn't quite turn out as I had hoped. As you can see, it's kind of slanted up there, but it does kind of create a draft seal. And uh, I, for this section here, I'm pretty much going to do the same thing. And as you guys can see, let me show you up there. Pretty big cavity in there. So uh, we'll try to at least get it uh, sealed off, the draft sealed. And I might just put one layer here and call it good on both sides. Didn't turn out great, but it's okay. We got this section, at least up to here, sealed up pretty decently. So I'm just going to go ahead and slide the last piece in front of it in. It will at least help prevent the pipes from freezing underneath the bathtub, cold air coming in underneath there since I have access to it. But yeah, fortunately there wasn't much I could do with that little space that I had to work with. So... Thank you all for watching. That concludes part two of this series. Uh, stay tuned for part three where we insulate the ceiling. Um, it will go a lot faster than part two did just because, unfortunately, this took longer than I anticipated. I had to do a lot of special cuts and stuff, as you saw. Uh, also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And feel free to leave a uh, comment. Feedback is welcome on this channel. So until next time, you guys, take care.